on December 18, 1990, we awoke to the scene of the beauty of the downy white snow that fell overnight about six inches. Here are some of the scenes of the grandeur of God's great creation here at Northland. What a marvelous beauty it is. And truly the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. As you look about, you can see the beauty of the Lord at every turn of the camera. And this is just a few of the scenes that you see coming out of the back door of our house here at Northland the morning of December the 18th. We are grateful to the Lord for the great privilege of being able to minister in this beautiful, beautiful handiwork of God. There are the, there's the traffic going along Highway 17 North is coming up. And soon the snow on the uh, lines, the hydro lines, the uh, uh, telephone lines will all be blown off. And you have another snowstorm with the lines clearing themselves. And yet those lines, when they get full, they'll just quiver and shake. And it's amazing the <coughs> manner in which these telephone lines can hold the snow. This, of course, causes a great deal of problem for those who would keep the services in order. From the barn to the house, here's some of the scenes that you see with reference to our backyard on a day like this. Of course, when you have snow so beautiful as this, well, it covers up a lot of telltale dirt that you have. Lilac bushes are just about bent over to the ground. Of course, the snow has fallen off of some. But uh, we noticed this morning that her little feeder is right almost halfway as high as it was when she started out feeding the birds when there wasn't any snow. Now we're looking at the driveway coming in. Notice the fence posts as they have their winter cap and the snow hasn't blown the caps off just yet, but before long it will. The posts are cut on an angle, therefore it looks like that the caps are cocked to one side. Now you're looking out into the garden at some of the old fruit trees, which are there, the pear trees and some of the apple trees. And this is the garden area in which we raise so much of our vegetables. And and looking down into the little pasture where we put the cattle out during the summertime. Now Silver has a great time barking at the snow coming off of the roof. He thinks he's barking the snow down, but that's quite a pastime for this dumb dog. Of the driveway in to Northland, as uh, you enter in next to the huge, beautiful white oak tree and then the spruce trees, these spruce trees, you could almost jump over them when we moved here 23 years ago. And there's our little Ensel Brick house where we live. And the Lord's been good to us to give us the privilege of living and ministering in this great, great, beautiful uh, recreation area. <clears throat> and yet the beauty of it all is seeing a number of dear folk in this area come to the Lord as their Savior and others being built up in the faith. Just one of her large uh, branches of the uh, lilacs there. The snow was just too heavy and down it went. This is a scene looking into the snow covered bushes just in front of the house. This old flagpole that's about to rot off. It's leaning and the snow is still sticky. As you look in the distance there is the Gooley Bay down about five miles from where we live. Now you really can't see the water, but on a clear day, looking down the road of Highway 552, the glimmering beauty of the Gooley Bay can be viewed even from our front yard. Some of the mess with reference to the limbs falling off of the big old oak tree right in our front yard. And here across the road from our front lawn is the heavy bush. It's privately owned property. And it was in this area 
that Lila first looked out the window when we moved up 22 or 23 years ago and saw a little bear standing on the edge of this highway and then it jumped off into the bush. It wasn't difficult for me to persuade Lila that we needed to get a gun and that we could hunt and use the meat of the moose and the bear for our sustenance here at Northland in those early years when we didn't have any stock. Now the scene that you're looking at, that's called the Mountain View. This little farm was named Mountain View Farm because of the hills you see in the background. There's the basement part of our chapel that you see, and there is the dormitory that we have been building on for years. But we're using it, and we're thankful to the Lord for what facilities we do now have. It is in this particular uh, driveway that I'm now standing that shortly Stephen will be out with a snowblower and having to blow the snow out so that cars can come in for the various ministries that we have here at Northland. And here we just like to show you what they do here in the north. There you'll find the snow plows. They have been by early this morning. Now that's not a very high bank just yet, but through the winter time, when the snow continues to come, that bank will be up around six feet high. There's Mommy on her way over to the dorm with her washing. We have our washing facilities, a large uh, 30 pound Wascomat automatic washing machine over in the basement part of the chapel, along with our large uh, hydroelectric um, dryer. So it's a little bit easier for her to haul it with one of the kids sn uh, sleds rather than carry it. And this is what she does so often by taking care of so much of the laundry work that is necessary here at the school. Here's a scene a little closer to the basement part of our chapel and you'll notice how beautiful the trees are in the background. Now as you wind your way up just a little hill and here's our little driveway, you wouldn't know it right now, up to the dorm and you can see Caleb's Park. Grandpa McLeod and Rick helped uh, build a little park and they named it Caleb's Park to keep him uh, fenced in. Well, he doesn't stay inside of that very often. He'll climb that over and he's on his way. And then here you're looking at the pasture uh, in the bush. This morning the horses haven't come down yet. They are uh, in the trees there someplace. It's a wonderful, wonderful windbreak for them. And of course they're just as healthy as can be. We feed them outside and uh, uh, give, give them good hay and uh, they, they really enjoy that pasture. Standing on the balcony of the dormitory now, taking just a panorama view of the scenery. Here again is our pasture. As you can see, it is heavily wooded. And then you come around to an area that uh, we also have a garden. Here's where we're some potatoes, a lot of very good strawberries. Now you can see the horses have come down. They're uh, munching on hay. This is just the uh, back part of the property. And uh, over in that distant area, is where we planned years ago to build the married couple's dormitory, but we haven't got any further than just the footings and some of the cement piers. We have the steel still over there, and I don't suppose I'll live to see that particular building built. And there's the little old barn where we have the cattle, the hogs and the chickens, and the cats and everything else. Uh, housed in there at the present time. Now then, here you can see in the distance, we're looking towards the city of Sault Ste. Marie now, and uh, uh, that is uh, the area called Mile Hill. And it's a very beautiful area. We have killed moose in that particular area, and uh, 
two real fine young moose a number of years ago. And then we swing on around the Gooley River Valley and you're beginning to see now uh, Trans-Canada Highway 17 as it runs in front of our property. 17, there's a little road that runs across uh, the main highway. That's Highway 552. That runs in front of our place and this particular branch of the road heads towards Searchmont where we go up every Saturday when we're home and hold a Bible study there in Searchmont for the believers in that area. Just a few, about eight come out, but we have a grand time of studying the word of the Lord together. Again, you can see the hills and the Gully River Valley. There you can see our hay field immediately beyond Highway 17, and then Mrs. Rouse's uh, field where we take off hay. And then there's a field a little further in the distance, that opening it used to belong to Mr. Colin Young. We used to take hay off of there for our livestock. Now that has uh, since been sold. He has gone on and uh, no longer do we take the hay off there because we have cut down as far as our agricultural project. Now you can see our little pasture where we have the cattle, where we turn the cattle out during the summertime. And here's the basement part of our chapel. And then the very heavy uh, snow laden trees that are immediately in the background. Beautiful, beautiful area. And again, we're thankful to the Lord for this privilege of being here and also for the privilege of being co-labors with you in the Lord reaching the lost and teaching the living. Stephen's office says he's there and I call it his Ouija board. But that's his um, a computer that he's working on the present time. We're getting ready to mail out uh, uh, our uh, prayer letter to the uh, folks on our mailing list. And this is where Stephen holds out most of the time in preparation for ministry as he carries on in such an effective way. Now then you can see his library and then right out to looking east here's the scene that you will see outside of his way. Now you saw the outside of the chapel just a few moments ago. Now this is what you'd see as you walk through the doors into the chapel. This is uh, the entrance way and uh, you see some of the rock work that uh, uh, we uh, laid up years and years ago. Stephen did most of the rock work. And uh, you'll see the logs that uh, we cut up in a bush. This happens to be a Christmas scene that some of the folk have put up for the uh, uh, Christmas season that we're here. Uh, and. Uh, we have greatly enjoyed the ministry of the Word in this particular place. Uh, it is a joy to see so many folks coming out now. We started this ministry and only had six Sunday school children years ago, but uh, we're thankful that uh, somewhere around 60 to 70, including the children, uh, will be out uh, on the Lord's Day to enjoy the ministry teaching ministry of the word. Front of the room, looking back, you can see our fireplace. There's uh, much that needs to be done uh, yet in this regard, but uh, this is some of the rock work that you would see as you would come into the building and coming down the stairway into the basement part of our chapel. And here is the scene that you would see looking around uh, the room from the pulpit area that we are uh, using right now. There's the, uh, the hallway that goes back to some of the Sunday school rooms. Now I'm going to just sh give you a little scene of the logs in the ceiling. Again, you will notice that uh, they're just plain old logs that we cut out of the bush and uh, Everything that you see, including the windows and uh, the type of uh, wall board, which is nothing more than woven strips from two-by-fours, uh, everything that you see, uh, we did ourselves. 
and we're thankful for it. The rug, one of the ladies in one of my home Bible classes years ago uh, was gracious enough to supply us a means whereby we could put a very, very commodious rug in the basement. But this gives you a scene of the facilities that we have by way of our mission work along with the college. We are very thankful for this two-pronged emphasis here at Northland, the reaching of the folk for the Lord and then teaching them. And so many of the people that are here have taken several classes in college, thus they have become very, very competent leaders in our ministry. We're hoping that we can see a greater emphasis one of these days. It's still much to our lament as a, a missionary thrust. We would love to see it enlarge. Maybe there's some things that we're not doing right. Trust that you continue to pray for us that we might have the mind of the Lord and have a mission ministry that is competent uh, with people. And again, this is the entrance into the basement part of our chapel. Continue to view some of the scenes of this first snowfall for uh, 1990. It's really not our first snow, but it's one of the uh, most significant to begin the fall winter. Notice some of the essentials which we have. Here's one of the essentials, our wood pile. Now we'll burn for the winter between the house and uh, the dormitory. We'll burn somewhere around uh, 80 to 100 cords of wood. Now we are thankful that we have a ready access. However, most of this wood has been supplied for us by one of the brethren of the chapel. And here is the little cabin. Uh, we do not have anyone in it at uh, this particular time. The students that we had here last year uh, moved on, but uh, we are expecting uh, to be using it on a regular basis uh, shortly now. And again, just some of the scenes that you would see between the house and the cabin, looking down at the little highway, 552, that runs in front of our property and the bush uh, beyond it. Wood behind uh, the house and uh, Lila is uh, uh, scooping out some of the snow alongside of the, the garage. There's our old uh, uh, greenhouse in the background. We're hopeful that we can put uh, uh, a good roof on it uh, this next year. We've just had um, plastic on of course in the fall when it gets cold the plastic gets brittle and blows off but we start all of our plants there and it gives us a little bit of a boost when it comes to the matter of our gardening in the spring here's one of the old hay piles uh, that we stacked outside because this year uh, our hay got so much uh, rain on it that we were afraid to put it inside so we'll use a lot of that for mulch uh, on our gardens and it just really makes uh, the clay nice and light and uh, it is very productive when that takes place.